stand and have a time of fellowship, please. All right, good to see you this morning. Let's sing this morning, Blessed Redeemer. That's hymn number 149, and we're going to sing all three verses today.
number 177. There's something about that name. I know whom I have believed. Let's stand as we prepare for our offering this morning. We'll sing the first, second, and last verse.
I'm so glad this morning that I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Brother Anthony and choir, for that special music today. Whew, put chills on me. So let's take God's Word this morning, turn to Luke's Gospel, chapter 19. Luke, chapter 19. I'm going to begin reading 
in verse number 28. As I've said before, sometimes we uh, have weeks that are just different from other weeks. Some weeks seem to go very smooth. Everything seems to go great. You've really had a good week. And then other times you have weeks where there's just a lot going on. You're really busy. Just You don't know where the time has gone. And all of a sudden, the week is over and you don't know where it went. Then there are other times when you have weeks where you really have a hard week. It's just a suffering type of week. There's been a lot of things going on. I know many of you have experienced that even just this past week. And we look at those times and we think, wow, you know, if it weren't for the Lord, if it were not for His grace, if we couldn't depend on God, we just wouldn't make it through the week. We wouldn't be able to get by uh, just on our own. And that's the way it's supposed to be, really. We're supposed to depend on God and trust in Jesus every day and depend on Him not just to get us through a week, to look at the week, though, and say, how can I honor the Lord? How can I glorify God through this, through whatever this week has been for me? I pray that I have been an honor to the Lord and in some way that I've glorified his life. When we look at the last week of the life of our Lord Jesus Christ, it was certainly all of those things. It was a good week uh, in that there were many people who heard the gospel, and many people uh, saw Jesus uh, perform miracles and, and teach about the kingdom. It was a type of week where was very, that was very busy for him. He had much to do that final week as he went into Jerusalem before he went to the cross on Friday. And uh, it was a difficult week as well. It was a suffering week for him as he was rejected by those not only uh, who didn't know him, but by those who were closest to him as well. Rejected, denied, uh, turned away uh, from. And then, of course, we know he went through the mock trial. He went through the scourging. And then he was nailed to the cross on Friday. And uh, he breathed his last about 3 o'clock that Friday afternoon when the evening sacrifices would have been done at the temple. There's the Lamb of God. There's the final sacrifice being made on the cross for your sins and for mine. What a week Jesus went through. I want you to know that it was a week to where many things were put on display for the week. We think about uh, those things that happen that are out there and, and we see them and we say, man, that's really been on display for us uh, this week. And we think about uh, many times what that means for us and, and how we're to respond to those things that are put on display before us. And there were many responses to the life of Jesus, the last week of his life being put on display. So if you're able to stand, I'm going to ask you to do so this morning as we read God's Word. Luke's Gospel, chapter 19, beginning in verse number 28, the Bible says... When he had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass when he drew near to Bethanage and Bethany at the mount, mountain called Olivet that he sent two of his disciples saying, Go into the village opposite you, where as you enter you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Loose it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, Why are you loosing it? Thus you shall say to him, Because the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went their way and found it just as he has said to them. But as they were loosing the colt, the owners of it said to them, Why are you loosing the colt? And they said, The Lord has need of him. Then they brought him to Jesus. And they threw their, their own clothes on the colt, and they set Jesus on him. And as he went, many spread their clothes on the road. Then as he was drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven, and glory in the highest. Which is a quote from Psalm 118, verse 26. And some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. Now as he drew near, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, If you had known, even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace. But now they are hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you, and close you in on every side, and level you and your children within you to the ground. And they will not leave in you one stone upon another, because you did not know the time of your visitation. The Old Testament has much to say about God visiting people. 
And sometimes the context is good. God's here. God's visiting us. Sometimes the concept, context is not so good. God's visiting us. He's visiting our sin. He's visiting our shortcomings. He's visiting our turning away from God and, and from His offer of peace and offer of salvation. But let us be sure here today, God has visited us and God is with us today. May we pray. Father, thank you for your precious word. Speak to us now through it. Teach us your truths. Help us, Father, to hear and to obey your word. To honor you, Lord, in all that you have entrusted us with. Lord, our very lives. We thank you for all that you do and for what you'll do in this service. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You can be seated. So we come to this Sunday that we call Palm Sunday. Now, Luke didn't mention the palm branches, but the other Gospels, especially John, does mention that the people who greeted Jesus as he came into Jerusalem waved palm branches, and they were saying, Hosanna to the King of David. That means, God save us. It was a cry for salvation. It was an expectation that they had had that the King would come one day, that there would be a deliverer who would come into Jerusalem and free all of Israel from the bondage that it had suffered for so very long. And Jesus did indeed ride into Jerusalem. He rode on a colt, on a donkey, certainly as Zechariah had predicted and had prophesied. And Jesus was fulfilling that. He indeed would be a king. He would just not be the type of king that they were looking for or that they were were expecting. But as he rode into Jerusalem, there was something that was on display there for all to see. And that display was a display of hope. It was a display of hope that yes, now there was a king, now there was a deliverer, now something would finally be done. And as Jesus rode into Jerusalem on that day, and the people cried out to him, and the people sang praise to his name, and said, glory to God, they were so grateful and so thankful for what God had done. There was hope now for their lives. Now, I don't know if you've ever been in a position where you've been without hope. I've been at times where I wondered where my hope was coming from, but I always knew as a Christian uh, that God was my hope and that I was going to find my strength, my peace, my joy, my hope in my relationship with God, with our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible describes hope as this. It is a confident expectation in the promises of God. And that's what they were hoping for. They had a confidence that what God had promised, He would now deliver. And so there was some hope for the people. They were crying out to God, and they were thanking God, and they were praising God. And so they saw that there was some hope. I want you to know that we live in a world today where there are many people who feel they are without hope. People who are without Jesus don't look to the future with much of a hope. They believe that they're going to finish out this world, this life, in the years that they have. But without Jesus, they have really no hope of the future. No confident expectation that God has provided anything beyond this world. I feel for people who have no hope, don't you? I feel for those who don't have any hope for what is coming in the future, that there is nothing ahead for them when they leave this world. I want you to know that the Bible tells us that we have hope in Jesus Christ. For John 3.16 tells us, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Folks, that's hope. That's the only hope of the world, that he who believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. At this moment, there were those who believed in him. Some believed in him truly, that he was the Messiah, that he was the Son of God. But many of them really didn't know what they were believing in. They really didn't know the hope that was before them. They really didn't know that Jesus came to sit on display a hope from despair, that God would save His people from their sins when Jesus went to that cross and made that once and all final sacrifice there on the cross for my sins and for you, your sins, indeed for the sins of the whole world, the sins of, of those who lived in the past, the sins of those who were there in the present and heard Him on that day, the sins of those in the future, would, which would include us and all those to come, that Jesus would die there for all of those who would trust Him all of those who would believe in Him, all of those who would look to the hope that God has given through faith in His Son, 
Jesus Christ. It put on display that there was some hope finally for, for uh, those who were looking for that and those who were looking for a Messiah, looking for a deliverer, looking for a Savior. Jesus was that hope. Jesus is that hope today. And He always will be the only hope of the world. The only hope of the world. Faith in our Lord Jesus Christ in who He is. That was certainly on display there as Jesus made His triumphal entry into Jerusalem on that Sunday. He was facing a very busy week. A week of teaching. A week of healing. A week of of going into the temple as he did on Monday and cleansing that temple and saying, you've made God's house a house of a den of thieves when it should be a house of prayer for all the nations. And they miss that. They miss that, that God's temple and, and God's promise was to all nations, that any who would believe in him could find their hope in God, could find the, the confident expectation of the promise of God that he would save all those who would call on his name. It was on display and, and for us now, as God's people, as God's church, we are to put on display the hope that is found within Jesus Christ. And we put that on display in our lives every day. Not like those in His day who were so fickle in their lives. They were calling for Jesus to save on Sunday, but by Friday the call was to crucify Him. The call was give us Barabbas and crucify Jesus. The call was to set one who is a sinner, uh, who is rebellious free and crucify the righteous one. Crucify the holy one. Crucify the one who is the only one who can bring hope to our lives. It was all on display right there for the whole world and certainly is on display today. But I want you to know a second thing that was on display there on that Sunday and throughout that final week of Jesus. And that was the fallen nature of mankind. The fallen nature. It was so much on display. Not only on that Sunday, but also throughout that week. The Pharisees came to Jesus and they said, Rebuke your disciples. Rebuke those who are calling out to you and crying out to you. Rebuke them. Jesus said, if they keep silent, the stones would have to cry out unto me. But the fallen nature of man would seek to bring glory to himself rather than glory and honor to God. You see, the religious leaders of the day certainly didn't recognize Jesus' Messiahship. They recognized that he was a teacher and they called him such. But they did not know his true nature. They did not know and understand that he had come to bring hope unto the whole world. And so in their fallen nature, they said, Jesus rebuked these who would cry out to you. Rebuke these who would come to you and call on your name. Re rebuke them who would not, uh, would not follow our teachings, but rather follow your teachings. I want to tell you that same fallen nature is on display today. Christians are rebuked all around the world for saying that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Christians are rebuked and, and, and ridiculed because of our belief that Jesus is the only way to God, that He is the only Savior of the world, that there is no other way. Jesus made it very plain to His disciples. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by Me. And that truth was made known not only to those disciples of Jesus' day when He was there with them, teaching them, but it is made known to us today as well through the Word of God. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. But our fallen nature, the human nature that is all around us, says, no, Jesus is not the only way. That there, there are other ways to God. Or that we as man are our own God, and we make our own life, and we make our own destiny. And human nature was on display among those religious leaders. But not only there, but throughout the week. As it got closer and closer to Friday, the disciples became more and more bold until it got to that point where they realized that their lives were in danger. And they recognized that if they followed this Jesus, it could cost them their very lives. And though the disciples and those, those apostles who were closest to him said, Lord, we will never deny you. Peter said, I'll go to Jerusalem. I will die with you. When it came time, Peter denied that he even knew the Lord Jesus Christ, that he even knew who he was. But not only Peter, but all of the disciples fled. Only John was found anywhere close to the cross on that Friday afternoon when Jesus hung there and when he died. Human nature 
fallen human nature was on display as it is today. As it is today. We love to come to church on Sunday. We praise God and we love to hear the choir sing and we sing our hymns of praise unto God and we hear the word proclaimed as as it's preached and as it's taught in small groups and yet so many times on Monday we go out and we deny Him with our lives and we go all week long and we don't put the love of God on display. Rather, our, our own selfishness becomes on display. And we've begged God for a job, but we refuse to encourage others and help others with God, what God has provided for us. We beg God to heal us, but when it comes time for us to comfort someone else and go to the hospital and see them or check on a shut-in, we're nowhere to be found. All of these things bring out our human nature. But I thank God that when we come to faith in Christ Jesus, we do have the new nature of Christ within us. And that is the nature that moves us and drives us to put on display. We have a new nature. We have new desires. We have a Savior who wants to use us and work through us and we serve Him because of who He is and because of what He has done for us. It was easy for all of these on Sunday to be so excited about what Jesus was coming to do. But then on Friday, they were there with the crowd crying, Crucify him, mocking him. Just this past week, I had an opportunity to spend some time with a young man I'd never met before, gave him a ride somewhere. We got to spend about an hour and a half together, and we talked about the Lord, and he, he told me about when he'd come to know Jesus as his Lord and Savior. And here's what he said it was so typical, and, and I found it even true in my own life, and perhaps you have as well. He said, For the first couple of years after I was saved, he said it was so easy to be on fire for the Lord. He said, I was really on fire. I was telling people about Jesus. I was studying the Word, and uh, I was worshiping, and everything was going great. But it seems like after a while, that fire kind of died down and, and sort, of, sort of went away. And I, and I just said to him, you know, we have that old nature that's at war, Paul says, with the new nature within us. And yes, we, we're generally on fire when we're first saved and when God does something great in our lives. But here's the truth. The Christian life is not a sprint. It's a marathon. It's a lifelong commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a lifelong surrender of our lives to Him, to let the new nature, to let the Holy Spirit of God have control of our lives and work in our lives in a marvelous and mighty way. There was on display hope for the world. There was on display, yes, our fallen human nature. But there was also on display there that day and that week the great compassion and love of God. As we read in the text, Jesus wept over Jerusalem. He wept over Jerusalem. It's only twice in the New Testament we're told that Jesus wept. This is one of those times. The other time is when he stood at the tomb of Lazarus, his friend, who had died. And it said that Jesus wept there. Shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. He wept because of what sin had done to to people, to God's creation. And it was not God's intention. It was not God's sovereign plan. And so Jesus wept there at the grave of his friend Lazarus. He wept here over Jerusalem. Over what could have taken place in their lives had they looked for and trusted God all the way. If they had realized that Jesus had come as the Savior of the world. Yet Jesus wept over what was going to happen. For we know that in A.D. 70, Jerusalem would be destroyed. The temple would be thrown down, stone after stone, till there was not one left upon another. That there would be a desolation that would come for them. And yet through through that and through the suffering that people would encounter, Jesus' compassion, His love, His mission, His obedience to the will of God was to go to that cross on Friday and die there for the sins of all. Indeed, as he went to the cross, he would cry out, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Even from the cross, even towards those whose human nature, fallen human nature had come on display, Jesus would show compassion and pity and mercy and grace and ask God to forgive them, even those who crucified him, even those who put him upon that cross. There were so many things on display that week. And so much on display today. The compassion of Jesus Christ is alive and well in this world. Through His church, 
through his people, through those who love God and love people and are willing to let Jesus do a mighty work in their lives to show his love and his compassion. And the most compassionate thing that we can do as God's people is witness to them about the love of Jesus and tell them about a Savior who went to that cross and died there, but he didn't stay on that cross. Thank God, not only is Friday coming for us, but Sunday's coming as well. Next Sunday, we will, like no other Sunday of the year, celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We will honor Him for coming forth from that grave and making sure for us the salvation that God has promised to us. That because He lives, we can live also. And that because His life was on display there as the risen living Savior, so our new lives are on display as well. And we'll see a picture of that in a few moments when we see those go into the baptismal water and display, paint a picture for us, the new life in Christ. That we've died to the old way of life. And we're raised up to walk, as the Bible says, in newness of life. And it's on display here today. What will you do with that? Jesus has made a spectacle of us and for us, for His honor and for His glory. And my prayer is that you will believe and find your hope because it's the only hope in Jesus Christ today as you repent of your sins and place your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. That you will receive then that new nature in which you will let the Holy Spirit of God have control of your life and move you to honoring and glorifying the Lord Jesus Christ And then that you will let Jesus show his love and his compassion through you to all those that you come in contact with. That Mount Olive Baptist Church will be that type of church. That we as individual Christians will be that type of Christian that will show the compassion of Jesus everywhere that we go. Yes, this is Palm Sunday. This is the day we celebrate Jesus' triumphal ride into Jerusalem that will set in motion... Those things throughout the week that will lead him to the cross on Friday. And on Thursday night here, we will celebrate Jesus' institution of the Lord's Supper with his disciples, where he washed their feet as a servant, and where he he told them and taught them of, of his mission and what he was going to do. And that, yes, he would come again. He would rise again the third day. That is true, and it is in the forefront of our minds today as we look forward to worshiping our Lord Jesus Christ with our lives. I'll ask you to bow with me for a moment, heads bowed, eyes closed, as we consider how the Lord's speaking and what He wants us to do in response to His Word today. There is so much in that final week of the life of Jesus that we could talk about. So many things that happened that week. His teaching, His healing, His compassion, His love for all on display there for the whole world to see. And we proclaim that truth today through the Word of God. Let Jesus change your heart and change your life. Yes, there are times we praise Jesus and then we go out the rest of the week and it just seems like we get caught up in self, we get caught up in the things and ways of the world. I'm thankful that we have the Holy Spirit of God to strengthen us and lead us away from those things and lead us to the will of God to honor His name, to glorify Him with our lives. And I pray that we as Christians do that. And I'm thankful that we have forgiveness, we have cleansing through our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But if you're here today without Jesus, if you've never trusted Him, there is hope in Jesus. Once again, He is our only hope. And I pray for you, I pray for you, that you'll recognize your need today to repent of your sins, repent of your old way of life. That means change your mind that results in a change of direction to Jesus, to open up your heart and life and surrender to Him. You can't do it on your own. It only comes through the drawing power of the Holy Spirit of God as He takes the Word and makes it known to us. And He's here today. He is drawing. He is calling us unto Himself. And I pray for you if you're lost to turn from that old way of life and place your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
pray you'll be saved today. And that for Christians, if, if you need to come to the altar, kneel and pray, if I can pray with you, help you from God's word, if you have another decision that you need to make, make public, come on down front as we have this time of invitation and response. Let's just be faithful to God. Let's hear his voice and respond to his great love and his great compassion. Father, thank you for Jesus who died on that cruel cross yet rose again the third day victorious. And we live our lives from that victory that you have given us. We live in the victory that Jesus accomplished on the cross and through the power of the resurrection. Father, we beg you to save here today anyone who is lost. Save them, Father. And I pray that they'll have the courage to come forward and make that public and let us rejoice with them over what you do and have done in their lives. Father, for other decisions that need to be made, we pray for your strength and your help now. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand. We're going to sing our hymn of response. And as we sing, and as we have this time of response, please be prayerful and mindful of those around you. Let's be in an attitude and spirit of prayer and surrender to our Lord Jesus Christ. Pass me not, O gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art called, do not pass. Thank you so much for your prayers and your kind attention uh, in the service today. Jessely, I'm, I'm going to ask you to come up here. Today we have Jessely Wages coming. And uh, Jessely was saved back um, last year at youth camp. And so she wanted to come this morning and make that public. And uh, let us rejoice with her in that decision to follow Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And then uh, today she comes uh, upon that profession of faith, desiring to unite with our church through baptism. And so we rejoice in that decision that she's made. Do I hear a motion that we receive her uh, this morning? Yeah, second. All in favor say amen. 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 And we are so happy. Yeah, Leah, let's go ahead and say it. Go ahead and say it now. And we love you. And we love you. We do love you. And we're glad that you made this decision to trust Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So we had already planned a baptism this morning uh, for Leanna, Leanna Allen. And so Jessely is also going to be baptized today. And many of her family members are here today. We're so glad to have you all with us to uh, rejoice in this time as well and join us in this time. So we're going to um, make ready for baptism. And while we do so, we're going to, um, Brother Anthony's going to lead us in a couple of hymns. And then if we need more time, we'll just do some fellowship while they get ready, okay? Everybody good with that? All right, Jessely, won't you go on back and y'all can make ready for baptism. And uh, let's just go ahead and be seated for now. And uh, Brother Anthony is going to um, lead us and then we'll continue our worship service through baptism in just a few moments. Amen. Let's take our hymnal this morning. 
and uh, turn to 249, and we're going to sing Glorify Thy Name. turn back just a few pages to number 212. I love you, Lord. one more time. we give them just a few more minutes let's take a time in fellowship
I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. Y'all act like you love each other or something. I mean, I just can't imagine that, but I'm glad that you got a few minutes to fellowship. So we're going to have our baptismal service now. What a blessing. What a blessing to see young people come to saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And to make that public, be willing to make that public like Leanna and Jessley have done, and then follow the Lord in believer baptism. We know baptism is that outward sign of an inward change in our lives, and the Lord just commanded us to be baptized, to follow Him, so we're baptized in Christ Jesus, the Bible says, and also to the fellowship of a local church. And so you pray for these young people. Special time for Drew and Amanda and their family, and many of them are here today as well to to uh, rejoice in Leanna being baptized and for Drew to be able to baptize his daughter. Uh, such a blessing. So we're thankful for that. And let's just watch and listen prayerfully as we have our baptismal service now. This is Jessely. I'm sure you just met her. And we're excited about Jessely. Um, we... Uh, she got saved last year at youth camp, and uh, we're excited about this day. Been looking forward to this day. Jessely, who is your Lord? Jesus. She said Jesus. In obedience to the command of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and upon your public profession of faith in him, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is my girl. <laughs> She's my last one. I get to baptize. Um, we, uh, we're excited. We're really excited. And uh, uh, we've been looking forward to this day for a long time, me and Amanda have. Leanna, who is your Lord? Jesus. She said Jesus. Leanna, in obedience to the command of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and upon your public profession of faith in him, I baptize you, my sister. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Sweet time. Good. So thank you for being here today to join in this service. We appreciate that. We have some guests with us. And you're always our honored guest here. If you can worship with us here at Mount Olive Baptist Church, you are so welcome, and we're so glad to have you. And we want you to feel that way here. If I can help you, any of our staff, any of our members, if we can help you in any way, we'll be glad to do that. And so our prayers are with you, and um, our love is with you as well. So let's stand. It's been an honor to worship with you today, our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, I pray you have a good afternoon. We'll have our evening service at 6.30, our discipleship training at 5.30. Uh, keep in mind that we'll have no service here on Wednesday night, but we will have a Thursday night service at 7 o'clock as we celebrate our Lord instituting the Lord's Supper. It'll be a special time for us, and we invite you all to come and be a part of that service on Thursday night. Remember, next Sunday, be a little different, 8 o'clock, church-wide breakfast for everyone. And then we'll follow that with our worship time around 945. And so we invite you to come and bring someone with you to worship on Easter Sunday next Sunday. All right? So uh, let's bow together. We're going to have our closing prayer. So glad to have uh, uh, Ed and Carolyn Ernest and their family with us. Brother Ed, would you mind voicing a prayer for us today?